essentially, right, to begin with, we need to understand what a CFO and FD does and where they're appropriate to various stages of organizations, right? Generally speaking, a CFO in a startup or scale up is going to do a number of strategic things. Okay. And I and I use the word strategic specifically. They're going to manage the capital of the business. They're going to manage the debt and equity uh, stack. They're going to plan your strategic finance. They're going to talk through with you when and even if you need to fundraise, right? And what that fundraising looks like, what the size looks like. Um, they'll give you some advice on EMI schemes. Are you doing your R&D recoveries, getting the right amounts, exit planning, uh, banking relationships, future cap table scenarios based on potential rounds in the future, dilution, what you expect to get out of the business when you exit. Um, and that's, it's a little bit different from a, from a finance director or, you know, potentially a head of finance in the a finance director may not have all of those skills above. So a finance director is, you know, probably not going to have extensive exit experience. They're not going to have MBO experience. They may not have significant experience in structuring the right debt and equity solutions, but the FD will be you know cheaper than the cfo we'll talk about price later on and they'll they'll be looking at financial modeling finance automation processes budgeting you know general cash flow management across the next 13 weeks or or 12 months they'll be helping you organize your service providers accountants tax advisors you know all that kind of stuff right so and then then there's the question of who does the day to day um and what you don't need in a startup business, right, is four or five different finance people because that's crazy. But it is important to understand that a CFO is not going to do your bookkeeping, right? They're very expensive people. An FD will do your bookkeeping, right? And but reluctantly because they may have been doing it for 20 or 30 years or something already. Okay, and it's not really in their wheelhouse, but it will cost you less than a CFO. But having an outsourced service provider, whether it's a, a good firm of accountants that are geared up to provide bookkeeping services and monthly management accounts, that kind of thing, or whether or not the FD or CFO have a contact that they can provide to do those bookkeeping services for you, right? Roughly speaking, they should be about £20 an hour. Okay. Bringing the, the CFO or the FD into uh, like the view of the structure of the rest of the business, well, when you're, and I'm sure you can all relate, when you're a founder... You may have many hats and you probably will wear many different types of hats at, at any one time. But generally speaking, a founder starts a business with a mission to solve a problem, right? They've identified a problem and they think they can do it better than anybody else. That's why I'm not a founder because I'm not that creative, unlike all of you. Um, <clears throat> sometimes founders are product or tech focused or they're ops focused or they're sales focused. It's rare to find a CFO focused founder, okay? Some of them may have accountancy training in the past, but generally speaking, they've moved into the founder territory because they don't fit the normal mold. OK, so if we look at a founder and say that's the, it's the key role in the business and they've started the business to, you know, solve a solve a problem in the market that they don't think has been solved. Number two in the business is then going to be a product or tech focused individual. OK, so and, that, and that's going to be your CTO. And then in finance. That's probably the third crucial role across your senior leadership team at, you know, early stages. And that's going to be your CFO or your FD, right? How, which one of those three roles you as a founder takes, right, is up for debate. But if you're, if you think you can do all of them, right, you're maybe spending two hours a month or two hours a week on finance. It's probably not enough to focus your time and skills and energy solely on growing the product you know or selling or or increasing the value of the business later on okay and that then brings us into the next point when i was talking about um you know financial processes and automation being at the fd level and then strategic finance being specifically at the cfo cfo level what's the difference between strategy and finops right well CFO strategic finance is 95% forward looking, right? And then your head of finance, your finance manager, bookkeeper, et cetera, all of those are what we define as FinOps, financial operations. And they will do the day to day of your business, right? In a startup, particularly in, <clears throat> particularly in a pre seed, 
or sorry, particularly in a pre-series A, an FD would sit somewhere between, you know, your head of finance and your CFO. Okay. And then it's not unreasonable to expect a fractional FD of some sorts to provide a full suite of services, right? I'm not, when I say a full suite, I don't mean getting them to process payroll. You can, but it would be a grossly inefficient use of your money and their time. Um, the majority of startups, okay, probably need a forward looking view. When we, when we say that it's how much money do we have now? What we, what we using that to do? How much are we going to increase the product? How much are we get, going to enhance the, the existing offering to customers? Where is that going to get us in terms of our metrics and KPIs, whether that's new customer onboardings, whether it's monthly recurring revenue, hitting certain KPIs that existing investors expect us to see, or hitting KPIs that we expect future investors to be interested in, right? You can get those services, okay, from, from a good FD. And I say that because at, you know, maybe a thousand pounds a day for a CFO, and the majority of people within this community are not going to pay a thousand pounds a day. Right, let's be honest, it's, cra it's crazy money. And so understanding, and we'll go on to what these what these roles look like um, a little bit later on, um, and the right time to bring in a CFO, general thoughts, and how do you choose the right one, okay? But it's important when we get to ID clearly identifying what you need, that we <clears throat> that we talk to other people and ask their opinions, right? If you talk to a CFO, I'm talking a genuine CFO who's got X experience, MBO, you know, series A, series B raising. And you say to them, right, I need payroll, HR, bookkeeping. And they say, yes, I can do that. Then throw them in the bin, right? Because there's no CFO who would agree to run payroll under any circumstances, not at a thousand pounds a day. They will be taking your money for old rope when it could be done for about 50 quid a month, right? By an accountant or a payroll specialist. So, it, a good CFO or FD, when you talk to them, will tell you exactly what you don't want them to do. And, and the reason I say that, if somebody says to me, you know, all that we need, these services done, we want payroll doing, you know, we want uh, year end compliance, and we want you to submit our VAT returns, I will politely say no, on the basis that having five, six, seven fractional roles or positions it doesn't make sense for me to have a scheduling tool that reminds me of every client's VAT return, right? If you have the right accountants, they do a very good job and they are experts at reviewing your VAT return, whether or not you've got correct treatments in there and everything else, okay? And that way, also, if there's an HMRC inspection, you take out the inspection insurance with your accountants and there's no costs, right? So it's important that when you talk to CFOs or, or FDs, they are there giving you the best advice. They're not there to, to take your money, right? And justify their existence. Okay. I have seen, I've seen examples. I had an example uh, about six months or so ago, a client that I didn't win. They came to me. He said, oh, can we have a chat? Yeah, fine. Um, and he said, I've got a fractional FD at the moment. They're doing three days a week, no, doing two days a week. And they've told me it's a four day a week job. And I said, what are they doing? X, Y, and Z. It was actually six days a month, right? That's all the job was, was six days a month. So I said, politely go and tell the person to find another job, right? On top of the one they're doing for you. He did, and now that person is still only billing two days a week, right? It's not uncommon. It's it's a weird dynamic, actually. The CFO should save costs, but at the same time, clearly we're looking out for ourselves because we don't want to make ourselves unemployed. If we do a good job, our time should actually reduce and then increase only at the most important of periods when you are fundraising, when you're in the shit, when you run out of cash, you know, everything else. Okay. So that's something, something key to bear in mind. There's also uh, another look, there's, there's an interesting view around hiring C-suite individuals as a whole, right? If we, all of you are familiar with CTOs, right? Or chief marketing officers or, chief product officers, whatever else. 
When you hire those people, you don't expect a CTO to sit there and code front end and back end and UX all day, right? They are there to build a team. The irony around a CFO is that they are not really there to build a team because as a one million pound business, three million pound business, they don't need to hire five people, right? They will find the right solutions for you. And in the majority of cases, your entire finance operations can be taken care of in probably less than 10 hours a month, right? With the right automation, the right technology and the right service providers. So moving to that point, it's important that you don't give, you know, and, and this is this is uh, going on to my, where was I looking at? Uh, this is going on to the point earlier on how to choose the right one, right? And it's important that when you're looking to find a CFO or an FD, there is some, there is clearly some key hires, right? And when I spoke earlier about courting the right opinion, talking to multiple CFOs, seeing which ones come across as genuine, asking other founders, you know, asking your investors what you think they should what they think you should look for in a CFO, right? <clears throat> So don't employ okay, a junior finance person call them, and call them a CFO because they're an accountant. It will only lead to disappointment because you've given them the job title of CFO. They may be doing great, but when it comes to actually needing them to have that really specific knowledge on banking relationships, maybe debt financing, share cap advice, EMI schemes, they won't have it, right? And you'll have a CFO that isn't a CFO, okay? So you'll only be disappointed by the hire. <clears throat> Do not go and hire a first-timer or perhaps an ex-top four or McKinsey finance director, right? And the reason I say that is because in a startup world, well, you need to be in startups and around startups to understand how they work. These large firms, having worked for them, are basically factories, right? You come out of that world and is this individual going to know what to do if you've got £10 in the bank or are they going to know how to process payroll, right? Are they going to know what to do in order to cut costs in your business, right? And are they going to understand your personality as a founder in make, most importantly, making sure that the business is saved no matter what, because this business is providing your lifestyle, it's paying for your homes, it's paying for your families, right? The true CFOs and FDs out there will have that empathy and really understand the culture in what it's like to be a founder, right? And support you on that journey. Similarly, if, and I've seen this happen, there have been times when startups have used a very good firm of accountants, okay? And they provide a good, a good all round service and then the partner from the accounting firm leaves and he says, okay, I'm going to be a fractional, you know, FD now. Don't take them, right? For the same reasons that you shouldn't take a top four or a McKinsey consultant, because he does not have intimate knowledge of the startup world. And they are probably not going to know what to do in the same circumstances again, right? They've only ever been on the other side, giving you very, very slight advice, maybe once or twice a year, charging you by the hour, probably 400 pounds an hour, whatever it was previously. Um, and they're not going to have the in-depth knowledge of the of the startup community. <clears throat> so then we have um, what else do we have? And then it's the question is when to hire that CFO, right? Going back earlier, talking about the the three specific positions. So the founder, the product and tech, the finance person, you know those those kind of things. There are probably you know, 10 or 12 things to consider when you are bringing in, a, when to bring in the CFO is. And I'll, and after this, I'll, I'll talk about the thing, the warning signs to look for once you've hired that person to make sure it is correct, right? So the first thing I would say to hire a CFO is when you, when you can't spend enough time on finance anymore, as in previously as a founder, you might, you might have raised invoices or you might have done the cash flow, right? You might have chased some debts. And you might have been out there do it, don't dim dabbing in some finance stuff. If you no longer can spend enough time on finance, or you don't want to spend time on finance, right? Then go out there and find somebody that's going to support you because the opportunity cost of you then doing something you don't want to do, don't have the time to do, and don't like doing is quite significant when the valuation associated with hitting metrics 
and sales targets is going to significantly increase the value of your business, right? Compared to what it would cost you for a CFO, yeah, or an FD at somewhere between 500 or a thousand pounds a day. Okay. And I, I'm, I'm not advising a thousand pounds a day because it's probably not necessary in the early stages. Another point in bringing in the right CFO is don't hire a CFO unless your financial operations are in order. And by that, you know, I mean, and this is one of the warning signs, if your CFO comes into the business and he may do the books and do the management accounts for four weeks, that's okay, right? It, get, it helps him understand the business. It knows where you are. If he's still spending all of his time on financial operations three, four months later, that's a really big warning sign because either the business wasn't ready for him and you haven't given him the tools in order to really add value to your business or that he's not a CFO, okay? The other point, um, the right time to bring in a CFO, when you want to figure out what milestones you need to hit in order to raise or exit, right? The invest most some people in here have raised a Series A. Most people, I think, are a kind of C level. When you start to get to those next stages, understanding the different types of investors that are out there, understanding the metrics that you could hit, whether it's customer acquisition metrics, cost of customer acquisition, long term values you know, monthly recurring revenue, those kind of things, your CFO will be able to advise you on what the macro market is saying at the moment in relation to what investors are looking for. So six, 12 months before you're thinking about raising, start having conversations with these individuals on what your product roadmap looks like, where it's heading, where you think that those product enhancements are going to add to the valuation of your business, because ultimately that's really going to be important when it comes to having those conversations with investors, right? Um, the next two are fairly, fairly similar. If you've raised, you know, probably 1.5 million in the last round, then it would be a good time to think about hiring uh, a good a good FD, good fractional FD, or a CFO on a regular but infrequent basis, right? As in Christmas is infrequent, but it's regular. So yeah, that could be one day a month, or it could be two days a month. And the reason for that is when you've got 1.5 million, you're going to be, you're going to get excited initially. You're going to invest it in tech, invest it in the product. Things are either going to go one of two ways. Either it's going to go off like a rocket ship, or things are not quite going to go as you expect. In both of those examples, a CFO is going to really is going to be really important. If it goes better than expected. Right. Then there are one of two things. Either the business could become self-funded quite quickly, or alternatively, you could go back to market very quickly and get another raise, right? With six, nine, 12 months after you've done this one. Even if you've got runway, because the business may be very scalable and it may be uh, you know, the appetite for it in this current market may be very good. If things go the wrong way, the CFO is going to be there to help you look at cash runway, how to manage the investor relations and that's quite important because investor if we've pitched to investors previously on hitting certain kpis having a good cfo who is able to confidently explain the kpis alongside you right and defend the finances of the business while you then defend what we're doing either in terms of a pivot or in terms of product development to rectify those kpis is going to give you, you know, a bit of a wall between the finances and the product side. So that can really help you as a, as a founder not to get wrapped up in everything. Because if they start asking finance or forecasting or assumptions-based questions and you trip over on a couple of them, they then tend to lose confidence in the product development and the general roadmap in the future, right? If they kick the CFO to pieces, it's not a problem because you still maintain your integrity around the business strategy and the product that you're developing right makes sense um at as a pre-seed or pre-revenue there is no need to hire a cfo okay there's no need to, if there's no need to get to pay thousand pounds a day right a good fd who has knowledge of this particular size business will cost about five to seven hundred a day um and they will understand, they will have some of the skills of, of a CFO, maybe 80% of them, but they'll understand what it's like in this size of business, the, the frequency you need them is perhaps a lot less, or the work is more bitty, or alternatively, you ring them up and you're like, I need something in three hours, can you help me, right? It's a slightly different 
environment to those businesses that are generally more structured at post seed or series A level. Um, another point to consider on whether or not you need, you know, a good CFO or FD is <clears throat> when you're investor reporting, you know, I might have briefly touched on it earlier, becomes more analyzed or more critical to your reputation as a founder in the business. I've seen many founders who have tried to be data analysts and pitch, you know, complex customer acquisition, churn rates and stuff to investors and still not get it after six months, right? And then ultimately not raise investment. So when your investor reporting is now key, when you've negotiated it with investors or beforehand, then think about getting that, that person in to help you. And finally, there are there are some specific sectors such as fintech, banking, FCA regulated, where you where you should bring in a CFO early, right? Because there's just the market defines that you'll need to, particularly in terms of reporting to you know regulatory authorities, that kind of thing. So, <clears throat> moving moving on to you know I think Ollie told me to talk for twenty minutes, so I might be running. Three minutes late. A couple of the issues that to look for after a hire, right? There's material errors in your forecasts. If as a founder, you are spotting errors in financial forecasts or any planning your CFO has done, probably question one, does he know the business well enough, right? Give him a slap a few times and then, you know, say, look, I've picked up these errors. This is not, this is not really where we want to go. Number two, are any members of the team lacking confidence in that individual? If they are, then it's something to be wary of because perhaps they're not demonstrating the leadership skills that are required at that particular level. Number three, have the service levels dropped since the original engagement? If they have, it could be, you know, it could be number one, that the work is less, okay? In which case you would negotiate a lower fee. Or number two, perhaps they've got other work or they've become disinterested, you know, or something like that, right? Or actually, there's not a significant connection there with the business. Because like I said earlier, a CFO should be there for the founder and they should kind of be your number two in the business, right? Outside any co-founding uh, circles. What you need them for has changed. And by that, I mean, did you hire them initially thinking they were going to do X, Y, and Z? They may or may not have done that. But now there's not really anything for them to do or alternatively, you know, they now need to do A, B, and C. If that's the case, obviously then have a conversation, see if the services are still required and make some changes. I mentioned it earlier, but the CFO is spending all of their time on operational matters. If that's the case, also question what they're doing, right? And how much they're charging you and why. Um, and then I did, I touched on this one too. They tell you they need more time, but your gut tells you they don't, right? As a founder, Within your business, you're fairly certain you know how long everything takes, and you are right. You you have a better understanding of your business than than most people, I would say. Um, so yeah, that would I think that's my brief rundown really on CFOs and FDs, kind of fractional hires and and that kind of thing. Thanks, Joe. A very very lots of uh, value in there, lots of important stuff. As businesses do grow and develop. Um, it's important as well. I've always felt that you get someone in who understands the business, like you said, Joe, emphasizes with, with you as uh, the, the founders, um, but also provides maybe monthly commentaries on that business and where it's going, um, where, where all the lines are. I think that's that's very, very important to understand that as founders, particularly as things grow and you get through that sort of 5 million, 10 million turnover um, benchmark, it's it's like crazy important to, to always yeah. have your finger on the pulse. Um, but that was really, really good, Joe. Any questions for Joe this morning from any of you? I'm sorry, I'm sorry it was pretty quick. There was a lot of talking in there. It was a lot. Not so, not, not so, many, not so many slides like most people. Gideon. On, Gideon. Joe, I, I don't know if I... I'm the typical kind of example here because I run a service-based business a bit like yourself. Uh, I have an accountant. I outsource all of the payroll and the and the monthly accounting and the annual returns, and, and they do a really good job. 
and but I'm always like mm, I'd like to have a conversation with somebody who's not because they're they're obviously they they do what they do they're they're you know an accountant a great accountant does the numbers and that's what they're focused on but I, I like Ollie just said somebody that what somebody that sort of could have that conversation with you about more about the business but related to the to the financials of it if you see what I mean I don't like they off my accountant sometimes offers me like do you want to have a quarterly meeting and I and I'm like yeah I'd, maybe I'd happily pay for it if I thought there was value in it but I'm not sure that they're the right people to sort of advise and, and I'm not a five to ten million pound turn of a business clearly so it's like who 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 would sort of fit that 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 is there such a thing uh, you know is it an, is it is there like is it a fractional fd that i just comes in and sort of looks at my books and then and then says right you need to think about this this and this over the next year is there such a person that exists or i mean, I mean if you've got if you've got aspirations for the business and you're and you're thinking okay i might want to do this i might want to do that i've got you know 50 60 grand in the bank what could i do if i hired someone else right those, those kind of questions then yeah by all means have a have a conversation with someone i'd be very surprised Right. If you, you, because what you're kind of describing is a not like a chat with, you know, a mentor or another founder or something along those lines. Do you know what I mean? If you like, let's say we, let's say we arrange a chat, I'd be very surprised if an FD would charge you for having a, a friendly conversation for an hour, right? Or two hours to run through your business. Cause that conversation is not going to be a regular thing. Those relationships are going to be built up over time. Do you, kind mm -hmm. of, do you know what I mean? If you've got specific yeah. objectives to achieve from a chat, then you know talking to there are some there are some very good finance focused founders right in in this community, and also mm -hmm. some, some finance people themselves. So finding someone like that, I would say, would be worthwhile. Don't pay your accountant to have a quarterly chat. All he's going to talk about is your revenue and then your year end tax bill, and go, oh yeah, yeah, good sales are okay, right? And that's basically yeah, gonna, it's a she, you know, but um. um... Yeah, no, absolutely. I'll just, I'll just say they. <laughs> um, it, I, I absolutely agree with you. I think they do a great job, but the team, but they, they're not the sort of people that could help me. I don't think they don't give that impression that they're the sort of people that could advise me. You know, you need to be thinking about this, this, and this, or have you know, they're 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 doing their accounts, and that and that's what they're that's what their specialism is so yeah maybe maybe it's a mentor or somebody that's kind of finance um yeah yeah, oh, yeah i think so Just finance find, background. Yeah, yeah. And another founder found exactly like this community really i mean it, it would yeah. really be a perfect question probably to open it to open a wednesday morning session get some views from people and then pick up in detail yeah. with somebody else that piques your interests later on well come along joe and raise that right perhaps uh get the conversation going i think that would be um worthwhile thanks joe thank you thanks gideon um...